Zakira Balika Tasiko Tobo. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for healing, for adoration. Thank you for prosperity. Thank you for advancement. We worship, we reference you, we glorify you, we adore you. Have your way, O Lord, that your name will be glorified. Blessed be thy holy name, O Lord. O Labagashi Katabasi Kotobo, wherever you are, thank God for life, thank him for healing, for prosperity, for preservation, for journey mercies, for those of us that travel over the, the holidays. Thank God for everything. God bless you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for life. We worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 We worship you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify you. Lord, we give you all adoration and honor. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. O oh, Labrogo Sakataba, Likatashikataba. Blessed be thy holy name, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Rebaga Sakataba, Nikoto Sokotobo, Mazokotorobo, Likatashakataba. Rabaga Sikotobo, Likataba Sikanama. We give you all adoration. We give you all exaltation. We worship you, Lord, for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for healing. Thank you for advancement. Thank you for all of us, for who you are. Rabogo sakataba, likata shikataba, likanama sokotobo. Yekireba sikanama likata sokotobo, rakata shikataba. We give you all adoration. Lord, you are mightier than the mightiest. You are greater than the greatest. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. I am that I am, we worship you. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Re pogo sikinema. Ma zuko torobo likata sikataba. Re kata shokotobo. La kata sikataba. Re kata ma sokotobo. Re koto shokotobo likata sikataba. We bless you, Lord, for life. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a great God we, we worship. Hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you. Today we are talking about the will of God. I'm telling you, many of us don't understand that everything that we do, right now and what we are going to do tomorrow. God has a path for us. He has a plan for us. He has a will for us. And many times we think that we are, we control how our life will become. Many times we don't control it. If you decide not to walk in the will of God, then you will walk in the will of the enemy. Because every day the devil dump information in your soul in your mind, and sometimes you think you are thinking for yourself. There is telepathic ability that the devil is using to control. You are going and you are coming, you are being. So that's why we're going to talk about the will of God today. What is the will of God for my life? And many of you, it will become clearer for you who you are and what God wants you to do in this season. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says the entrance of the word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We worship you, Lord. We reference you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's go to the word of God today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. The will of God, the will of God. The only way to be in the will of God is when we have total submission. When we submit to the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit is the director, is the one that has all the abilities and the forces of heaven. The key to the operation of the will of God is in the hand of the Holy Spirit. But you can't submit if you are not led. 
That's what the Bible says in the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Say for they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Romans chapter 14, verse 7. Uh, Romans 8, 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. The Bible says, as many as are led, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many that are, are led, if you are not led by the Spirit, you cannot represent the deity called God. The, God is a spirit also, but he has his, a, a part of him that is called the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost also, that Jesus introduced to us, and he has been there from the beginning. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the firmament. So he was the second in the Trinity that was introduced before Jesus was even introduced in Genesis. And the Bible says in verse 3, and God said, let there be light. And that was when Jesus, the word of God was introduced and light came out of darkness. But it was the spirit that makes the ability of the light to come. So we have to be in, in accordance with the will of God by the submission to the Holy Spirit. It is the only part to be in the presence of God. Submission through the Holy Ghost. I remember we talked about the prodigal son before. The first time he came to his father, he said, give me that, give me that which belongs to me. And the, the, his father gave him the, his portion. It, he didn't steal it. You know, sometimes people say he was, he stole. You know, he didn't steal. He asked, but it was given to him. But it was not even the asking and receiving that was the problem. But he refused to submit under the government, under the rulership, under the authority that was governed in the city where his father was the king. So he went to a far country and, this, and excommunicated himself from the authority and the governance of his father. And the Bible said, not quite long, he wasted all that in a righteous living and he began to be in want. But I want you to see something. When he came back home in that Luke chapter 15, the Bible said, he didn't just come back in verse 11. He said, Father, I'm not worthy to be called thy son. Make me. That means he submitted his will now. Make me one of your higher servants. That is a classic example of total submission. You cannot, I say again, cannot. The Bible said in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. But at the right hand of the father, there are pleasures forevermore. So there is something about his presence and you can't find the presence. You can have the spirit. You can operate in the power of God, in the spirit of, in fact, let me tell you about the three realms of God, where God is king and where God operates on his daily basis. I want us to go to the book of Matthew chapter 6. We are going to take time to read it. Matthew chapter 6, the Bible said in verse 9, Jesus was teaching them how to pray. He said, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy way be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation. I want you to look at verse 13 very well. Matthew chapter 6. And lead us not into temptation. So why would God not lead me into temptation? If I am in charge of my life, I should be saying I'm not going to fall into temptation. But you are telling him to lead you because you are a submit. You are a person that has submitted unto his will. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I want you to see now, God has his three realms, and Jesus gave us an expo here. He said, for thine is the kingdom. You are the king of the kingdom. He is God. We talked about God's names, how you can use the names of God, the power of his names yesterday. We know in his position as God, he's the king. So, but Jesus said, for thine is the kingdom. That is the first realm where God operates, which is in his kingdom, and the power which is exercised by the Holy Spirit, and the, the glory forevermore. So, these are the three realms where you can find God. If you want to find God through his glory, all these three realms, it is only possible by the name of Jesus you come into the door. But when you are led by the Spirit, you get to the presence of God. The presence of God. God guides his presence with jealousy. And you can only be in that position, in that place, 
when you are somebody that has submitted to the will of God. The will of God is what wills you because it is his will. It wills your life into his presence. Many times we think that we are thinking for ourselves. Many of us we think that what we are so smart. Yeah, you can exercise smartness. But I'm telling you that your being is governed, is controlled, is managed microly by the authority that you submit to. If you don't submit to God, by default, you, you submit to the devil. You don't have to say, devil, I've submitted to you. You don't have to consult a shrine or go to a voodoo priest or somebody to lead you into the devil. Once you are in this, this two big kingdom, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, where the devil is. There's a kingdom of man, but the kingdom of man is ruled by the kingdom of darkness. So I can't even call it a kingdom that has its own rulership or authority because the supernatural controls the natural because it's called supernatural because it is superior to nature. When it's superior to nature, it is supernatural. So the supernatural world, you refuse vehemently to do the will of God, then you will be doing the, you will be doing the bidding of the devil because now the devil and his co-host through witches and wizardry and through um, demons and principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness will be dumping into your mind, into your consciousness, in the physical, different things that you will begin to think about. And as you give them thoughts, then they will begin to develop into what you will do. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody, maybe I've lost you. But the only way to ex exit from the rulership of the enemy is to submit to the Holy Ghost willfully, willingly, you give your life to Christ and you submit to the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit begins to govern your being, govern your activity. I want you to see Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians. I want you to see Second Corinthians in chapter 10. And we are going to read maybe verse 3 down to 5. You say, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not canal. But mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds are those things that the devil has dumped in your mind. Then I want you to see verse 5 to understand what I'm saying. Casting down imaginations. Imaginations. The imaginations are not external. They are internal. So your imaginations, your thoughts are inside of you. Casting them down. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity. Every thought, every thought, every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ. The only way you do that is when you will your life, will your spirit, will your activity, your being to God. And your soul is now being controlled by the word of God, by the will of God. Then the things that the devil has stopped will begin to leave. That is when you will not be moved into anything. You will not do anything until you have heard from God. It doesn't matter what it is. Decision will not be made in a hurry because now you are a man of the spirit. How do you think that man journey into the supernatural? I'm going to show you something here. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 1. If you look at Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse one, the Bible said the prophet Ezekiel was writing and he wrote about himself. So now it came to pass in the 19th year, he was very specific. In the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives in the river of Cheba, that the heavens opened and I saw vision of God. These are men that have willed and yield themselves. Even though he was in a place of captivity, Physically, not spiritually. His spirit is still in heaven because that is a man of the spirit. His mind has journeyed. He was there in captivity and the heavens were open and I saw vision of God. Even though I was on earth, you can also talk about John, the beloved, in the island of Patmos when he was dumped there to die. John was there, and the Spirit of God appeared, and an angel came to him and wielded him. A living man, he went into the heavens, 
And they began to talk to him and show him things while he was still living on earth. Hello, Kotosa Kataba. What about Enoch? The Bible says, and he took a walk with God, and he was not. The man walked, just let me take a stroll, and God came and they began to talk, and he walked into heaven. He did not fly, he didn't die. Elijah! Men that have yielded and submitted that every part of your life is controlled by heaven. Because by default, if you don't, the devil will still rule you. That's what we call the power of telepathic. The telepathic ability. Sometimes you think you are thinking. You say, yes, I'm going to do it. You agree. You agree with the devil. The devil did not show up. He didn't come even in front the form of a man. He went into your mind, casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and take it into captivity. The thoughts, the thoughts, all your thoughts, all your thoughts, they are inside of you. You take into captivity those thoughts to the obedience of Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify you. Hallelujah. Let's move on. The will of God. Let's go to a man that God called, Jeremiah chapter one. Jeremiah was a man that God called and God was began to talk to him and say, let, let me tell you something. Go and do my will. And Jeremiah was complaining. If you read from verse one, the Bible says God told him to preach. And he said, I'm, I'm not eloquent. I'm a child. I'm a youth and all that. Many of us give excuses. But God made him clear. Many times God will not tell you like he spoke to Jeremiah. But Jeremiah was a, a, a kind of a special case because God wanted him to do it by fire, by force. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed thee, before, before. When you hear something that is before, that means it pre-existed before with the current condition or the current situation. There is a pre before the current so before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. So God said, I, even in the womb, I was the one forming you. So sometimes we, we want to give credence to our parents. Yeah, they did a lot because they were there. They, their body were the vessels that were used to transmit everything that God wanted to do. But your source is not your father or your mother. They might be responsible in channeling you to this world because you came through their channel, but they are not the one that formed you or created you. Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. And I app appointed you a prophet to the nations. I consecrated you. I ordained you. How can you talk to somebody that is, is not yet born and you are telling them that they have been ordained? That means I'm telling you that we are trying to do our own bidding on earth here. But our lives and our bills have been programmed, predestined, arranged, pre-planned. So it has been predestined that I will be speaking to you all today, whether I like it or not. If I decide not to do it, then I would do the biddings of the enemy. Whatever the devil has programmed, that's what I would do. Why not take time and find out what's the will of God for me? Before you were formed, I knew you, I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Hakotu Sakataba, Rebaga Shikanama. The way to the will of God is the way of his presence. You have to be in his presence to be able to execute his will. You have to be a man and a woman of his presence, but how do you get there? You must be led by the spirit. For they that are led that by the spirit are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the spirit, they are what we call the sons of God. Psalm 91. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret, or there that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The word they abide is submit. You are dwelling there. Where you dwell, you are under the rulership, the government of that place. The secret place of the Most High is controlled by the Holy Ghost. The angels that are there, the word of God is part of it, but the spirit of God is in charge of every heavenly host. 
So for you to operate under the shadow of the Almighty, you must be a person of the Spirit and a person of submission, a person that has released yourself, committed yourself wholeheartedly to God, and let God be God in every situation. Find out what is the will of God concerning what I'm about to do, the business, what I'm about to do, the marriage. Many of us jump into marriages and we get in, a, the way we jump in fast, we come out very, very fast. And you ask the person what happened, they can't explain. There are forces that didn't let you stay because you didn't ask questions. They are, you have to be a man, a woman, a person of the spirit to understand for you to maintain any position in life that you want or you are, you have to get authority from the spirit. The world that we live is a spiritual world. Even though we live in a physical world, the operation of this world is a spiritual thing. If you look at that same Psalm 91 in verse 2, say, I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. That means if you are trusting him absolutely this way, you have already submitted to, you have mortgaged your will to him. Surely he shall deliver thee from the stairs of the fowlers and from the noiseless pestilence. I want you to see verse 7. A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand. No, no. No, the Bible says none and none shall come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not, it shall not, it shall not. So if a thousand plus ten thousand, that's eleven thousand, dying around you, falling by you, being destroyed, being, and God said all these things will happen. You will see it, but it shall not come near your dwelling. Only with your eyes shall you see and behold how the reward of the wicked is, how they are being punished. But I want you to see why. Verse 9, why? Why will all these things happen and I'm preserved? Because thou had made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Habitation is, this is where I live. I live in your presence. I live in your authority. I live under your government. So I have to yield to your bidding. I have to be the one that responds to what you want me to do. So if there are trouble around me, as long as you are still my king, as long as you are led by God, it will not come near your dwelling. You will hear about it. Is it a good thing? No. But that's what it is. You have to be a person of the spirit. You have to be a person that has submitted absolutely. Release your spirit, your soul, and your body. Let God be God in your life. And let all the chips fall where it may. You don't have to care whether what you are doing is working as long as it's what God wants you to do. A lot of times we want to be in competition and the church have also con contributed to that because if we go to church and they tell us that until you have 20, 30 houses, 5, 10 cars, and they live in this splendor, and, and, and palacious lifestyle, that is, means that God is with you. I told you just the, now, Ezekiel chapter one, the man of God was in captivity, but God from in captivity, people are crying, gnashing of teeth. He was taken to the heavens and God was talking to him, giving him vision in captivity. Did you read the book of um, Romans, um, uh, Acts chapter 12, when Peter was in four quaternions of soldiers, the angel of God came, he was in prison. In the book of Acts, Paul and Silas were in jail. As they began to praise God, they went into the heavens. The angels of God came and opened the prisons. They were prisoners, but they are already in heaven while they were on earth. It's a merciful God. I want you to thank God to have mercy upon you. Let the mercy of God come upon your life. Lord, we release mercy now. We release mercy from the crowns of our head to the sole of our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit divine, have mercy upon us. Help us to come back so we can be led by the Spirit. For they that are led, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the souls of God. Help us to be led, Holy Spirit. Help us now. To be led by your spirit, O Katasi Katama, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And if you go down further, verse 14 of Psalm 91. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. I told you about the name of God, yesterday, the powers of his name. You cannot know God if you don't know his name. That's, we have talked about it yesterday. Go and look at the message for yesterday. Scroll down on my wall. You are going to see it. Because thou have known my name. He shall call upon me and I will what? Answer. Verse 15. I will be with him in trouble. How many of you can your father call when you tell your father, say, oh, I have trouble. They say, go and finish what you started. Your mother, sometimes. Sometimes you don't even have anybody to call. But God said, he shall call upon me. You will call him. And I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. And I will deliver him and honor him. So God said, even if you are the one that causes trouble, as long as there's trouble, call me. I will deliver and I will honor you. And look at verse 16. With long life, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And show him my saving. Salvation is to save, to, 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 to separate apart. Hallelujah. God is going to satisfy you with long life. Receive long life today in the name of Jesus. Because you have made God your habitation. Because thou have set your love upon me. You love me. God said, okay, therefore I will deliver him and I will set him on high. Somebody's about to be taken to the high places of this world. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are talking about the will of God. So many things that we do, it's not by our own will, but it's by the will of God that we are able to do it. Jeremiah chapter 10. I want you to see something here. We are going to pray in a moment. The Bible says, Oh Lord, I know that the way of a man is not in himself. Jeremiah chapter 10, 23. I want you to see or write it down. Oh Lord, my God, I know that the way of man is not in himself. So my ways are not what I want to do. The things I'm doing, I told you, I have all this degree in different principles. I've done business. I've done all this. I want to go this way or that way because this is what I want you to do. You can't change it. And sometimes if you refuse, he will not force you. But by default, you'll be doing the bidding of the devil. He said, oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Jeremiah 10, 23. I want you to see. Look at the big part of it. It is not in man that walketh to direct his step. It is not in man. Some translations say to alter his own step. You can't change your step. You can't alter it. It is God. If you don't accept the will of God, you fall into the will of the devil. Oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in himself. My ways are not what I want because I have submitted to the will of God. I've submitted to the rulership of God. I've submitted to the, to the authority of heaven by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then it is not in man, in man, in any man that walketh, that walk around to direct his steps. It is not in any man, whether you are a king, it has been predestined, it has been arranged, it has been proposed that you will be so. In fact, there's a place in the Bible, I don't know if I'm going to find it, God was taking glory of a man of a man that was very wicked, very, very wicked. And God said, I made him, I, 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 put, I put him in that position. I set him to be that. I make him to be that person. I think in the book of Jeremiah, God was talking about Nebuchadnezzar and how he has, he said he was my servant. I made him to be a wicked king. I kept him that way. I'm going to find it and I will let you know. But I want us to move forward. It is not you to do your bidding. It is not of you to do your bidding. It's God that directs the footsteps of every man. Oh, Lakata Shikataba. Acts chapter 13. 
Verse 36. Look at the Bible is talking about David now. For David, after he had served, after Acts chapter 13, verse 36, after he has served his own generations by what? The will of God. Fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. After he has served, and you think, oh, wow, what a great life. David was a king, and from nowhere, that was a good story to write for Nollywood or Hollywood. And, you know, coming from the ashes and became this great man, that was very great. But God said, it was by my will. For David, after he has served his own generations, by the will of God, by the will of God, it is not by his own will. Remember when God said, I have found a man, David, for he will do my will. He will do my will. I have found another man. Go to the house of Jesse. I'm not making, for I have found a man that will do my will. A man that is after my own heart. God have predestined, programmed his heart knew that David will not fail him and called him. Few times he wanted to sway the other way, God brought him back. Are you going to let the Spirit of God lead you now? Submit unto the Holy Ghost so that he can take you by the way of the presence of God, so that you can be in his presence. For the Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures, pleasure. When I say pleasures forevermore, we are going to pray. Jesus said in Mark chapter 14, verse 36, after he came down from Gethsemane and he was praying and said, God, please let this cup pass by me. And he went to the next level. He called him Father. You know, when you get and begin to call your dad, your mom, you are now, you need closure. The Bible said in verse 36 of Mark 14, and he said, Abba, Father, my Father. All things are possible. He reminded God of his ability and his power. All things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. All things, when you mean Jesus was praying, this is Jesus. Two times Jesus prayed, God never answered. This was one. What did he answer? Because it was the will of God that he has to die. My father, that was personal. My father, my father. All things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup. Nevertheless, I want you to see the next part. Nevertheless, not what I will. Not by my will. Nevertheless, not by will, but thy will be done. Nevertheless, not of what I will, but of what thou wilt. Not my will. So I am handicapped. I don't have the ability to change it. I know you can, but I'm going to leave it unto you. I'm going to say, well, we have an agreement. We will die. The Bible said, for God, if he could not spare his own son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that God has already had set this war. It is for us to either do it and have the life that he wants us to live than for us to go and decide the life we want to live. I see a lot of smart people and say, oh, I'm very, very smart. And I've seen many smart people that never, their smartness was foolishness. And everything they have tried to be smart about, they failed. Because it is not of him that will it, nor, nor, nor him that run it. But the Bible says it is of God that showeth mercy. There's a way Solomon put it in the book of um, Ecclesiastes. He said, the race is not for the sweet, nor the battle to the strong. No bread to men of knowledge, no wealth to men of understanding. But time and chance happen to them all. The race is not for the sweet. Some smart people are under the bridge, very smart. In fact, people that have A in school, that's the statistic. I'm talking about using worldly calculation, secular calculation. The A students are working for the C students. How can you put it together? If you're in school and you have A's, straight A's, and everybody say, wow, they are very smart. 
that we end up working for the C students or dropouts. The richest people in this world are not the smartest people. Thy will, O oh God. Thy will. And there is nothing you do for you to make an impact in the area of your calling. You have to contact the Holy Ghost. You have to be in, 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 in what you call it. You have to mingle with the Spirit. If you refuse, then you have to mingle with the devil. There is no two ways about it. By default, if you if you refuse the Holy Ghost, you will fall into the manipulation and direction of the devil. Because the demons dump information, good and bad, into your, into your what's it called? Your soul every day. They dump so much information that you begin to be confused and think that you are thinking for yourself. But you have been manipulated in the spirit. The moment you release your soul and submit to the will of God by the way of the Holy Ghost and let the spirit of God lead you, then you begin to walk in the will of God. And that is when God begins to use you mightily. And this kind cannot go except by praying and by fasting. You have to be a man of prayer, a man that can look into the spirit and defy food. Yeah, we eat sometimes to live, but we are not living to eat. You are not a gluten. You are not born to eat. You are born to live. Food is part of what you do. So that's why we eat sometimes to live, but we don't live to eat. Hallelujah. Our existence on earth is not because of food or because of clothes, it's or because of resources or finances or because of pleasure. The, the glory that you have is for the pleasure of God. Everything that you will become, everything that you will become tomorrow, it is for his pleasure. If God decides to make you somebody that is notable or significant or successful or wealthy, it is for his glory. Even if you are poor, the Bible says, and all for thy glory, for thy pleasure, and all for thy pleasure. It is his own pleasure. The Bible says, for God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Mazoko Torobu, Rekata Shikataba. We are going to pray. Look at Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Then he's saying, I come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the force that he may establish the second. I come to my existence, my coming, my being born, my going to school, my traveling to United States and all over the world, my being a minister, a pastor. All this is to do the will of God. Then he said, Lo, I come to do the will of God. Are you here to do the will of God? I come to do thy will, O God. Can you say categorically, Lord, I'm a man, a woman, a person that is here just to do your will. Use me as you will. Use me as you want. Because we are going to pray. And you start to see God move in your life. Mightily. Mazukotorobu rakata shikataba. Zekete sikataba likata shokotobu. I told you the, the, the three realms of God is in Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The only way to access those realms whereby you will be in the presence of God is by the way of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The first thing is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you, you release your spirit man and your soul to the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God begins to lead you. When you are led by the Spirit, then you are now the Son of God. Say, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the source of God. There's a power that is going to be given to you. As men that receive him, they give him the power to become the source. But as men that are led by the spirit, they are the source of God. Are you going to let the Holy Ghost begin to lead you now? Say, God, lead me today so that I can do your will. You cannot, by strength shall no man prevail. You cannot, I don't care how strong-willed you are. The devil will baptize you. 
The moment you submit to the will of God, the devil cannot because you are a man in the presence. The Bible says in his presence, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the father, there are pleasures forevermore. And all this pleasure is for his glory. For the Bible says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So it is not much of, I want to succeed. It is of great glory that you succeed because the glory and the pleasure comes back to God. If God is seeing you succeeding, he is going to talk about you like he said, have you considered Job, my son Job, for he is just in the east. Or God was talking about Abraham. I will not do this wicked thing without letting my, my friend Abraham know. Can God just stroll down the earth and pass him by the streets of your city and say, let me stop by the house of this my daughter. A man, a woman of his presence. It happens only when you have submitted. You are dead to yourself. Everything about you is not important. It's what God said. What said the scripture? What is the will of God concerning this situation? You don't just rush out and take decisions, especially when it has to affect generations. Because every man that you see, and when I talk about man, I'm talking about both male and female. You have four generations in you while you are still living. Four generations are already in you. Don't destroy them by the decisions you make now. Because the devil will set you up to take the easy route and you fall into the temptation of the devil. The Bible says casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, ask God now for mercy and let God begin to lead you. Say, Father, have mercy upon me. I submit unto you. I ask that your will take over my heart. I might have done these things that are not right in your sight. It is all of us. It is not man that has sinned, but thee only have I sinned against, that thou may be justified. Don't take thy Holy Spirit away from me. Don't take me away from thy presence. Because that is the key. David knew that if the day he loses the presence of God, it doesn't matter whether he's still a king, things will start to go terribly bad for him. He said, Lord, don't take me away from thy presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. He said, for I have sinned against thee. Thee only have I seen that thou may be justified. Ask God for mercy. Let the spirit of God begin to carry your mortal body. Let your capacity increase for you to be able to house the ability and the host of heaven. That the power of God begin to manifest in you. I'm not talking about experiencing the Holy Ghost, but being in the presence of God. That through doing his will. That the beatings of heaven they will know that they have somebody on earth, wherever city you are, to represent the, 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 the beatings of heaven. That if you are found in anywhere, God can say, oh, I have a son in the city of Lilburn. And I know, like God said, that he will do my will of David. He said, for I found a man in the house of Jesus, a man after my heart, who will do all that I ask him to do. Can God talk about you that way? Because you are a man, a woman, a person of the presence. Let the Holy Ghost take over now. Lead me, all of us, Spirit of God, take over my life. Make me who you want me to be. I cannot decide what I want to be, but I know that you have decided how you are going to carry me. Let my body help to fulfill the will of God while I still live here on earth. In the name of Jesus, Jesus said, that we should find the things that we are looking for while it is yet day. Because the night cometh when no man can walk, when you cannot preach. The night of your life, I told you the first 30 years of your life is your morning. The next 30 years is your afternoon. Once you cross 60, you are your night. If you see half time, ask God to lead you. Even if you see half 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you can still do a lot in that time. Let God begin to lead you. The Bible says, and the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Let the God be the one that leads you. Because once he is the one that leads you away and you are following him, sure, you are going to come out with a great result. We thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. We give you all glory and adoration. If you have not received the Holy Spirit, now I want you to ask God to come into your life. Let the spirit possess you. 
I want you to say, Holy Ghost, come upon my life. And some of you, if you have to pray for some days to be able to activate what is already in you, you can take a fast, three days, five days or seven days, six to three, six to six, six to 12. It doesn't matter. I don't want it to be that you have to be controlled for you to know God. I want you to do it willfully. Let the presence of God carry you. The Bible says, and the, the spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted. And he didn't just go and started being tempted. The Bible says he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. There was, he was in the leading of the Holy Ghost. Who knew if Jesus did not fast and pray? Maybe he would fall. But he went into that place and began to operate in the authority of heaven. Ask God to lead you today. To so that you start to do the bidding of heaven. Let the power of God lead you and carry you into that place of supernatural. That this natural will begin to go away. You will be the one that will help God to fulfill the, 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 the plans of heaven on earth, in your family, in your community, in the place that you have find yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rabogo sakataba. Le kata sikotobo. Manzi katarabali kata shakataba. We give you all glory and adoration. We exalt you. We magnify you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for we know that you have done it. Help us to pray according to thy will. Help us to be your sons and daughters. Help us to stand in the presence of God. For the Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, O Lord, they are pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Mazoko Torobo. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I'm going to pray for this nation. Things are not going well, but with God, all things are possible. Everything that is in heaven he is the one that created it, and on earth, He is the one that formed it. Let God be God in America. We release the power of God upon this nation. The devil is raving and raging, but the will of God shall stand. The Bible said there are many counsels in the heart of the man, but the will of God shall stand. Lord, let your will concerning this nation, concerning America, stand. Let your will concerning what is going on in this COVID economy, stand. We went out today with one of my friends. We couldn't find something that we're looking for that was common, and we drove everywhere, look for it. Many of the companies were closed. I want you to know that people are hurting, and you might be one of them that are hurting, and you are looking at me. I, I, I pray this day that the will of God concerning your life and your livelihood and what God has proposed for you begin to happen now. In the name of Jesus, is there anything that you want God to do for you? I pray by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus that the, the things that you are asking shall be what God will be able to do. Let God do it for you now by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. Ah, Kataba, are you sick in your body? And you are listening to me, you say, Father, mine is just healing. I need healing for fibro. I need healing for cancer, leukemia, high blood pressure, COVID-19, coronavirus. It doesn't matter whatever. HIV. Ah, yakata shikotobo. The Bible says, and he sent his word and he let them. Let the word of God enter into you. For the entrance of the word bringeth light and understanding. Let the word illuminate your body. And remove every sickness and infirmity, every mangoso sekereba, zikata sakataba, whatever is not representing heaven that is in your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Receive healing now in Jesus' mighty name. Are you standing for somebody, maybe a family member, brother, sister, father, mother? I say, let the power of God that is on this platform move into your life and move to your family member or to your community or somebody you know. Are you a nurse, a doctor, paramedics? Are you in the medical fields, EMT driver, janitorial workers, in the grocery store, uh, essential workers, pastors, everyone that is going out there bustling and hustling every day just to put food in your table and you are doing all this in the mix of this disease. You shall not contact any illness or sickness. We cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. As you move around the highways and the byways, let the Holy Spirit that is here begin to elevate and destroy every plans of the enemy in your life. Submit your wills to God and he shall bring them to pass. Lord, we thank you for we know that you have done it. Let the power of God move to Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Middle East, South America. Let the pains that our people are going to the Lord heal our broken heart. And Jesus said, for the spirit of God is upon me and he has given me the power to heal the broken hearted. 
to set the captives free, Mazokutrobu, and to proclaim the acceptable years of the Lord. Lord, let all these things come to pass now by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus. We thank you for we know that you have done it, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm going to pray with you. If you are here, you have not given your life to Christ or you have been a Christian, then you, you backslidden. I want you to come back home. We are here to welcome you in the name of Jesus into the commonwealth of Israel. I pray that the power of God shall come upon your life. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. And I confess in my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Congratulations, you are born again. Look for a Bible-believing church and connect. I love you with all my heart, but above all, Jesus, love you the more. Connect with greatness and your life will never be the same again. Amen.